All right, welcome to another episode, episode 15 of Venture Ventures D&D 5e actual play podcast stream thing everything with the big bedfellows minus one big bedfellow there's minus our theme song oh minus no minus our theme song oh, no. which uh you know obviously is randomly decided by Mr. <laughs> Roderick and uh yeah, I think uh, I have nothing. Oh, that's a thing. Um, I'd like to thank um, Tessa from RPG Cast for putting us on her website and uh, mm-hmm. listing us there and with all the other great RPG podcasts. So thank you. And thanks, Tessa. Yeah. Um, thanks. I'm like questioning whether I think it's Tessa and I wrote it down, but I'm like going to double check now. <laughs> well, I can't like be Veronica. blamed. I, I, yeah, I cannot be blamed if I get it wrong. It no, is it's, all Jake's fault. It's, it's Tess or Tessa, but I'm pretty sure it's Tessa. Okay. Then I'll say thanks Tess. And then, um, and then you're right either way. thanks Tessa. And then it'll be fine. We're just grateful for you. The Tess. person that starts Fuck, with a T. I screwed it. I screwed you it up. You screwed it. <laughs> Jake, it's we're Tess. supposed to be professionals. Tess, I'm so... <laughs> we're building to professionality. And, I got a and... new microphone. I'm a professional now, Jake. Well, what I'm I mean profesh. is like professional D and D players. We're building. <laughs> we're we're building to that point. I'm sorry, Tess, <laughs> but thank you so much for putting us on your site. Uh, yeah, and let's go ahead and get this party started. We'll go around, plug what you need to plug. Uh, name of your character and, and I won't start with Catherine uh, since... I'm ready Okay, it's fine Catherine. it doesn't matter that I just took a bite of something <laughs> yeah go uh, ahead and start us hello I'm Catherine Elise you can find me online at Catherine not IRL that's Catherine K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E not in real life uh, and I play a radiant night song who is a drow monk class um, who is very huggy and uh, let's see. What do I have to promote? Uh, I'm going to promote Justin's show. Justin, hey. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm building a stand-up special, Better Than You Think, on Thursday, December 6th at 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. in Los Angeles at Oh My Ribs Theater. Uh, so it's on my website. You can get tickets there. And, and yeah, I will... And I will promote that I am going to be there at the 8 p.m. show. So if anybody wants to come I and as well. not touch without my consent, but say hello to me, and then <laughs> I, I will well. decide if we hug. So okay. 8 p.m. Yeah. is when you can chill with the big bed fellows if you want to come and hang out with us. Yeah, Catherine yeah. is different from Aradia in that she, you know, um, asks. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 that uh, touching is is not my favorite thing if I don't know a person, uh, unlike Aradia. So. <laughs> okay, Richard. Is that it? Oh, hi. <laughs> my name is Richard Cardenas. Uh, I play Nihilus Nymerith. He is a Triton wiz- uh Sorry, Triton sorcerer. And uh, it seems like he's pissing off everyone lately. Uh, <laughs> I didn't anticipate it going this way. Uh, he may have to dial it back, but it probably isn't going to happen. Uh, Don't you can for find... other people, Nihilus. Be true to yourself. <laughs> uh, you can find me online everywhere at Le Richard C. Um, also, check out my podcasts, Inter- uh, Interview with a Nerd, and also Awkward Human Survival Guide. Cool. Yeah, like we said earlier, Dave won't be joining us. He's driving on the uh, Interstate 5 somewhere in the beautiful Central Valley of California. I realized wow. earlier this week when I told him that he should, you know, draft big rigs uh, <laughs> and was giving him advice on things like that, that I was telling an engineer how to physics, essentially. Oh, how to... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that was a little... But I also like how optimistic it was. Like I, I don't know how much drafting like gets you, but does it, like, does it cut like hours and hours off of? Well, <laughs> uh, not hours and hours. So, like, we no. just we just like redo our freeways to have semis on it at all times. Uh, <laughs> it won't save hours and hours, but it will save you. When I drove like a nineteen, a car from the nineteen early nineteen nineties, 
Um, and it will definitely help you with gas mileage a ton. The problem is you have to get within like five feet of the back of, of the back of the big rig, uh, oh, no. which is slightly dangerous. Um, so you have to be paying attention. Very oh, curious to know, is this a conversation that we had on the podcast last time? No. Or are we talking? So we're just talking about a podcast or a, a conversation that we had completely separate <laughs> from our audience. We're In just Discord. Yes. Okay, but, great. you know, our and audience. Maybe that's the home of the podcast. The home of <laughs> Guys, the podcast. our Discord is happening. Let yeah. me tell you what. All day, every day. <laughs> Except for when we're doing things. Yeah. Which is... I just want to really quick, because it came into the view of my camera, point out my aerial doll. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> She's in a green dress. <laughs> I want more. I want a close-up action on that aerial doll. Is that your promotion for this week? <laughs> yeah, I'm promoting aerial. <laughs> promoting the Little Mermaid. They don't get enough promotion. Great. Perfect. Uh, let's recap. You guys... Uh, had a encounter back at Venture Ventures. You met Hottie Cowpier, which <laughs> was not realized. Uh, I disappointed Richard majorly <laughs> about halfway through that episode when he uh, realized what was happening uh, with my shitty, shitty jokes. Uh, a, a minotaur, anyways. He wanted to join you guys because he wanted to relive his his earlier adventuring days as as a younger minotaur and uh was a member of the uh well older brother of um horace rich and a member of the um dock workers guild one of the managers there um and i keep screwing up that name uh the uh faction name for that but i'm just gonna keep doing it uh and uh so he said he'd come whoop, lost someone he said he'd come <laughs> with you uh and pay for to get rid of your curses which had been happening thanks to a hag or what you think is a hag most likely is a hag then <laughs> i love the way you are so you're like Let, let's not metagame we don't fully know what she is yet but probably more than likely yeah hag. i go I, I struggle with that because it's like no well yeah you, it's your job to not metagame yourself or metagame <laughs> yep. if you want, if that's your bag. Um, anyways, you may, you uh, went to seek out more information and uh, went to the kind of the corporate headquarters uh, in the city of the Aspel Arcana to get a meeting with High Keeper Inara Kiltraxen, who was holding a grievance council day where people who have had interactions trying to sell or buy or trade their baubles with the Aspel, Aspel Arcana can come to her and essentially air their grievances and yell. And uh, there, Aradia found her people. Maybe it was <laughs> maybe it was uh, pandering. Is that the type of, uh, is that the right word for what Aradia did when she got yes. in there? That I pan yes, that feels right. <laughs> <laughs> uh Aradia became very popular in there, and um, <laughs> they talked to Inara, and now they're on their way out, got some information. Turns out Hottie and Inara went to school together, and Hottie did not want to talk to her. Luckily, he was able to get out of there. And we got some housekeeping to do, because I forgot to do this last week. No... Um, Housekeeping. I know what's coming. <laughs> as Hottie takes off, like he wants to get out of there, his his uh, minotaur skin is crawling with awkwardness, and he is the first one out of the door, walking really fast, which is really fast for such a large uh, being, an eight foot tall being. And uh, you guys follow out the door of the Aspel Arcana, and uh, as soon as you guys are out. You hear a whoosh and splash, ah. and the smell of iron fills your nostrils and your senses. And you look down <laughs> at yourself, and you're covered in deep, dark red blood. Uh, oh, no. 
Aradia, Aradia, of course, turns to anyone that will look at her and with blood covered across her entire body goes, more like the asshole I'll call it. And uh, Prodi... It's all she's got. It's all she's got. Prodi uh, is completely covered in this red and Hottie turns around. Squeaky toy is uh, going to... That's Prodi. I like yeah. imagining that Prodi sure. is now becoming a squeaky toy. Sure. Uh, Hottie turns around and sees what just happened. He's like, how does that even happen? What in the... And then he looks at Prodi and he's like... He starts smiling. You see a smirk and he's like, you look like a cardinal right now. That's quite cool if I say so myself. Uh, Prodi says whatever Prodi <laughs> says. I don't know what Prodi would say in that freaking uh type of situation probably tell him to uh go kick rocks or something um <laughs> and so you guys are covered in blood now uh would you like to head back to your inn to shower this was a reference to for all to inform you guys the housekeeping i was obsessed with <laughs> uh <laughs> with poppy last week so this yes. was a, a a little retroactive uh the scariest woman on the internet. She's weird. <laughs> so now you guys are covered in blood. It's really not germane to much, but we'll say it was Auntie Nani's doing. <laughs> Is that who we suspect? I don't know. You can suspect who, whomever you like, but... Uh... Are we close at all to um, some sort of public body of water? Mm. Like an ocean? Or one of those fountains that spews arcane energy. It's not water. Yeah, probably not that one. <laughs> probably probably not that. That. Okay. Why okay. isn't it coming off? <laughs> no, you guys Mainly are... the reason why I'm asking is because I would rather not get our hotel room that bloody. Yeah. So it would be nice if we yeah. could um, find a hose or something. I also feel like there's something behind this blood, right? Like I feel like she's trying to cast the curse or something. That's a, that's a little a worried. Point. I'm a little scared about like going home because that's so predictable. You know, I kind of want to like go somewhere else. Sure. Uh, I mean, I have a bathtub I can just summon. Oh, oh my gosh. There you go. And soak in. <laughs> um, you guys are closer definitely to the Arbor uh, Green and uh, where you guys were staying in Midtown uh, than to the Bay. And of course, the Bay has its own risks. Uh, so. Yeah, what would you... Let's Arbor Green it, and then, of course, as they're walking, um, uh, Aradia is going to try and hug as many people as possible. <laughs> with okay. the blood. Okay. Let me get my D20s out. <laughs> uh, make an investigation check. I just want you to know that uh, Nihilus is walking very uh, disgustedly and like... Uh... I would do the same thing. <laughs> uh, Aradia, change that to perception. I don't know why I said investigation. Okay, great. So she rolled a 12. Um, oh, and she has plus 6, 18. Okay, you see a... Um... You guys are walking already, or are you still in front of mm -hmm. the... Uh, yeah, okay. We'll say uh, you're just on your way, and people are just moving out of the way. It's like a parting of uh, the Red Sea uh, with people. People are freaked out. You're covered in blood. The A guard comes up to you, a, a, um, a uh, guard of Anista, not a denizen but uh, a guard and he goes excuse me yes you, you what hi Hi. so you're you're causing quite the the uh, trouble here with your current would you care to tell me what happened is what i'm trying to get to oh nothing much we're we, adventurers yeah <laughs> i'm sorry what we're adventurers have you never seen an adventurer before? No, that, that actually clears, <laughs> makes, <laughs> makes a little bit more sense. Uh, but do you 
need directions to a inn to clean off or anything. We know I love we, that you we, just assumed. We know where we're going, sir. I, I also <laughs> love that you've just assumed that we um, went injured. Because why would you say an inn and not a hospital? We're covered in blood. It may not be our own, or it may be our own. You, well, you don't guys know. Well, you guys weren't crying out in pain. You're just kind of, <laughs> kind of walking. <laughs> um, I did make some assumptions, yeah. But <laughs> but uh, I think it was a safe assumption. Are you injured? No, thank you for asking. Just my pride. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um well, you know, it's probably not safe to keep blood on you. If are you guys, any of you have... Sir, we realize this. You're stopping us from cleaning up. Yeah. We're just trying to get to where we're going. It's drying. The blood is drying. <laughs> I feel like a statue. I just want to go. Okay. Is All there right. any more, it's, sir? No. It's no. caked in the corner of my mouth. Can you Ugh. see this? It's caking <laughs> in the corner Ugh. of my mouth. <laughs> He just walks away and goes, I'm so sorry. I don't know why I do my job. <laughs> and uh, so do you want to go back to your inn or? Are we not walking towards water? Uh, that's that's what, what I, I thought we were thought going. We were going to the inn. Yeah. Okay. So you get there. <laughs> you get there and. Um... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step away for just like three minutes. I'll be right back. Perfect. Okay. Let us know how your laundry there. is. Thanks. Okay. 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 <laughs> uh, so when you get in there, it's moderately busy. It's um, there's probably like six patrons, one of which, when you enter, Aradia, you would probably notice this most. Um, he is dressed in very fine clothing, and um, his eyes are. Uh, just bright yellow green. His clothing is red and white, um, mostly red with white, uh, white accents. accents. And um, he, he, while everyone else is like, "What the hell happened?" Disgusted. He's kind of like, "Huh?" To all you guys <laughs> entering, <laughs> entering the inn. Naomi uh, looks at you guys and says. Oh please, please just go upstairs and 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 clean uh, yourselves. This is I just don't don't sit down here anywhere, please. Naomi, you're gonna need to send us up some chocolate cake. Thank you. No, okay, just uh, <laughs> just promise you'll go upstairs and clean. Get me that chocolate cake, Naomi. She she goes <laughs> off and. <laughs> Naomi has turned a corner. He has turned a corner. <laughs> She goes off. I mean, I'm into it. I'll reap the the rewards of this as long as I don't have to be it, you know? Uh, and get you a chocolate cake that she has. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little dry, um, but uh, it's edible. And she hands it to you or brings it up to you if you're already up there. And, yeah, we're uh, up in the room. Okay. It's room service. <laughs> And uh, you have your cake, you get washed, and uh, I assume you head back down. Sure. Yeah. Um, I Unless would... we did a little cuddle session beforehand, you know. Um, I have a quick question about um, the uh, the tub that I had, or that I have. Um, I know that on the description in um, the D&D and Beyond uh it said that if i use it basically let me see let me see let on me a long see. rest i think um if is it only for a long rest i think it's you have to sleep in it to get the benefit of a sanctuary spell i believe i'd have to look at it again um, oh yeah during a long rest never mind i'll ask later okay and uh you guys head back downstairs because uh proddy will say one <laughs> Wanted to go talk to that gentleman uh, with the bright yellow green eyes, and uh, when he sees you guys, he he stands up and he invites you over. He's like, "Please, please, you are the most interesting people I've seen today. I was not expecting this. I don't get to come here very often, and just 
you're such a sight for sore eyes when you came in here with all that blood. So please let me let me pay for your drinks and anything else you may want, food wise. Just please have a seat. Accepted. And um, he gets you your drinks, and he's drinking out of nothing that they serve there, but he offers it to you. It's just looks like wine um, that he brought himself. So you can partake in that or not, if you'd like. He introduces himself as Stoppard, he says. I'm Stoppard. It is fantastic to meet such an interesting group covered in blood, or formerly covered in blood. Uh, so, we... can, wait, I'm sorry. Can I? I don't think Sarah would sit there in blood and have a conversation. I feel like she'd oh, want to get we sour went in, first. We went Did in. Yes. Oh, okay, good. So we're not covered in that. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. No, we're Thank good. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, How's laundry? Uh, How's laundry? Yes, good. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Are things getting clean? I knew the and... listeners really cared. Yeah. So... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you're talking to. Justin, you're talking to a man who was very excited. Everyone else, when you entered uh, Naomi's Inn, was naturally just disgusted and appalled to see people covered in blood come in. But he was very, like, interested and curious when you came in. And once you guys had showered and cleaned yourself, uh, you came back down and he offered to... uh, He wanted you to sit with him uh, and... uh, he'd buy your food and drinks and stuff. Uh, oh, thank you so much. I'm you're, excited. You're welcome. This is the most interesting group of people I found here. I don't get to come to Anista, well, once a year, uh, thanks to the um, Festival of the Moon. Uh, but uh, so tell me about how you got covered in blood. Um, it was kind of like, did you ever see Home Alone, the movie? No. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of like that, in that we were walking out of a doorway and a paint can of blood just kind of spilled on us. And it's kind of like Carrie. Mm-hmm. And uh, we think it's the evil hags who are killing children in the city, but no one believes us. So. Um, um, Arabia, oh. like, uh. <laughs> oh, I mean, I mean uh, it's just a gang war. <laughs> I like you guys. You guys are awesome. I really love taking down people who need to be taken down uh, a peg or two, as it yeah, were. Yeah, I'm all about fight, fighting the power and the man. Great. Jake, I just want you to know out loud that because everyone that you have ever had us interact with is so antagonistic to us, I am now terrified of this person. <laughs> Martha was antagonistic? <laughs> well, that's true, and I loved Martha, but now I'm feeling afraid because I just met this person. Aradia likes yeah. him, though, but Catherine is very afraid. <laughs> did I, did I, I miss can I predict that he's looking for contestants for his uh, gladiator battle? <laughs> <laughs> and that we're like really impressing him. I'm I'm pissed that I didn't think of that. Um, <laughs> um, everybody make a perception roll. <laughs> Three. Uh, <laughs> um, Seventeen. Two plus six, so eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, other than the bright yellow green eyes he has, um, and his nobleman's fine clothes, that's <clears throat> all you notice. But uh, so he asks you about this hag and um, your situation, and how much do you tell him? Um, you I can think insight it's, it's check for... anything he says. By the way, let's not forget that. Um, oh. I want to insight check nothing right now. Um, the uh, I think Aradia it, it feels okay to tell him about everything except for the hags. Like, I think I think she'll just talk about like there are some weird people at this orphanage, but I don't think she wants to say that they're hags. He says, um, referencing, he he notices after uh, Sarah's 
bit of of honesty and now that you're not mentioning hags he n realizes this and he says uh just nonchalantly uh you got to be careful if you are dealing with hags they are really terrible creatures uh are you one of them? Are you one of the hags in disguise right no, now? No, thank God. Uh, uh, for you and for me. Cause... Can I do an insight check? Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it's not, that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> um, ooh, oh my gosh, I got a one. <laughs> <laughs> so he might be my father. I don't know. You're definitely <laughs> sure that you're positive he's not a a hag you believe him 100 percent uh and um yeah if any of if richard or Catherine, you want to sure make i'll try it out I'll, yeah I'll see i will too Ooh, not, not 20 oh and 19 baby yeah you two are Ooh, also so very confident like... that he's not a hag and he's being honest about not wanting to be a hag and all that and um he seems to be generally with those high rolls just being honest with you guys and he's jovial and do we know his name stoppard stoppard Stop that's right S -T like tom stoppard s-t-o-p-p-a-r-d <laughs> um uh he basically uh just wants he's he says he's he's here uh during the festival um when he can make it he comes uh, every year at this time just to experience the city, see what's going on, maybe have some fun, play some tricks on some people, stuff like that. Uh, and uh... Aradia stops him. She goes, you know, you have very magnetizing eyes. They're very specific and different. May I ask where they come from? He leans in and he leans into you guys and looks around and he goes, I'm from the Feywild. <gasps> Shh. Oh, wow. That's exciting because this I think too much of a coincidence. I don't really He's care if you that. tell anyone, but <laughs> I just thought it would be fun to do that. So, Oh, that's fun. Are you like puckish? Are you sort of like a, like a puck? Uh, 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 <laughs> Uh, I'm not familiar with that term. Uh, it's from um, this amazing piece of literature. I don't know if you would have read or not. It's a very specific a Midsummer Night's Dream by good old <laughs> Billy Shakespeare. <laughs> Close heard... family friend. I heard of him. <laughs> That's him calling now. Excuse me. I've got to take this. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he, uh, he says, I don't know. I, I... It just sounds familiar. Maybe Bill Shakespeare, part of the... Is he part of the Seely Court or the Gloaming Court? Oh, Seely for sure. If I knew him, I would say Seely. All right. Uh, well, I swear, he must be not... He's not a lord then. I, I think I'd know him. Uh, it sounds familiar, though. Somebody's consort, po possibly. <laughs> Oh, so you are from the Seely Court? No, uh, no, I, I no no no. Oh, I see. But, oh, Feywild, of course. Yes, I've oh, been that there. Makes sense. Uh, yes. Try not to stay very long. Times a little funky in the Feywild. They try to make you stay. I don't like to stay places very long. But uh, so you're dealing with a hag. It sounds like. Is that correct? Yeah, I got any tips or tricks? Um, um, it seems like everyone wants us to not fight this hag. Oh, why do you <laughs> say that? All signs keep po pointing to don't do it. Why? Why do you say that? Uh, uh, you know, because everyone just keeps warning about how strong they are and how we're gonna die. Okay. Uh, Hottie speaks up and goes. Well, you're not even sure that all three of them are hags, is that correct, Nihilus? We're pretty sure. We got good intel from the future. 
Well, in, in fairness, we're not sure that all three of them are hags, but there's definitely at least one hag in the bunch, and we are Don't undermine sure me, Aradia. <laughs> Nihilist is right. Everything he says is right. When, when you mentioned the future, uh, Stoppard is very even more interested in you guys. You're from the future. Wow. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's kind of a long story, but basically we're from the future. And we're trying to save the world, but then we got caught up in saving the Hold on, future, wait. So... I'm going to stop you just because last time you did this, it went on for a long time. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we just pause it there. We're not from the future, but we've been to it, and we're back now. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I, mean, I, I may guess. have... I may have... To be honest with you, I was hoping to come back to Anista and, you know, see see an uprising or, of some sort just to kind of bring down the the rulers here. I always forget, I get my rulers in each city mixed up. Who's the ruling class in Anista again? I'm sorry, everyone. Wasn't there a Sphinx? There's like a, a bad Sphinx. Or she's not, she hasn't started taking power yet. There's like the... The dead people, the spirits, the de- is dead. Is this Sarah or Justin? <laughs> I'm very. I'm like trying to. I feel like I'm, there's a pop quiz and I didn't study. No, this is this is stopper. <laughs> this is. I, I'm sorry, it feels that way, but this is stopper genu- genuinely uh, asking. Um, okay. And so if you guys, yeah, all I'm about to start saying is like. Is Rotava it... Temple and uh, <laughs> Deference District. Jesus is it... <laughs> uh, he sees you... I have like all these names written everywhere. Yeah. Lelaine? Is she the one we're taking down? <laughs> she, she was Partana, the... the objective? She, she was... Lelaine was the <laughs> Kenku friend of the child that uh, Sarah was throwing That's... in the air and dropped. <laughs> That's oh, right. <laughs> Okay, Man, your notes are bad. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's taught us how to take notes yet, Jake. We're uh, learning. Yeah. Did you guys? My notes are getting progressively better. Like for example, I just had to remind myself. I put Stoppard. We met at the Bar and Inn during the Moon <laughs> Cycle. He's a Feywild. He's so, a Feywild. Um, <laughs> a Feywild. Yeah. Single Feywild. <laughs> he's he's a yeah. He's a. I'm in Kari. He is from the Feywild. So, He's from the Feywild. Uh, we need to take down Amenkari. Those are sphinxes that run the justice system of Anista. Uh, they are not the rulers of Anista. Uh. They, they are not the protectors of Anista. The protectors are... Uh, denizens? The denizens are not... Oh, you said it in a way where I thought I just won and I didn't. Anyways, so Stoppard <laughs> sees you guys like getting confused and like going through your notes and he's like, what the hell is happening? And he turns to uh, Naomi and goes, Naomi, who, <laughs> who are, who protects this great twin Naomi. city? <laughs> no! <laughs> and when we you have do a that, question. when you do that, Stoppard <laughs> looks at you <laughs> for the first time his his happy like go lucky face and he says we do not snap at people and it's oh, very I'm serious. snapping toward her oh. not you do at not her. snap at people I'm not snapping at not her. I'm in snapping my toward presence. her and he goes back Aradia to Radia just <laughs> fell in love with Stopper in case we were wondering uh Stopper just happened asks Naomi who the uh protectors are and uh, he, uh, she goes, oh, that'll be Suha. Let's see oh. you guys. Yep. No, but she's a the good dragon. person. They don't know. No, nobody knows she's, uh, that was a recent development from the future. So nobody knows. Oh. They're, they're just very uh, secluded um protectors of the city there's two of them it's uh i'm forgetting two thank god thank god what? <laughs> yeah no don't feel it then <laughs> oh i can't suha. keep all this in my freaking head are you kidding me <laughs> uh it's suha and zahur council of two zahur. custodians of independence 
the Ever Watchers, the Wardens of Anista. So they are. Uh, so Naomi tells Stoppard that, and <coughs> Stoppard goes, "That's right, that's right. Uh, I don't even know them." And then Aradia just... very. Go ahead. Aradia very quickly says back exactly what Naomi said in a way to make it sound like she definitely knew that before <laughs> Naomi said all that. But uh, she didn't. She didn't know. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, Stoppard just scoffs and chuckles. Um, so he goes, yeah, I don't even know them, but I just hoped I would have seen something like that. It's always nice to see a change in leadership. Anyways, I might be able to help you all. You're definitely the most interesting people I've seen in my two, day two days here. It's been rather boring. Uh... But, uh, yeah, the blood and the time travel, I don't even, that's incredible. That's probably the most interesting thing I've, I've seen here in the last few decades. Anyways, yeah, let me go check. And he gets up and the same door that you've seen Naomi, like, go into that you assume is a kitchen bringing food out, um, you see her exiting it, and it looks like a kitchen from what you can see at your table uh, peering in. Naomi walks out, and she kind of just looks at Stoppard as he's passing her, and he enters the door. It's one of those double swing. I don't know what those doors are called, those uh, doors that can swing out and in. Um, saloon doors, I think. Sure. I don't know if that's the official, but yeah, it's like know. what yeah. you see on saloons. Uh, and uh, Stoppard goes through there, and when he goes through there, from what you can see, in the make a perception check. Just give me everything. Everyone. Yeah, everything. Everyone. Uh, 19 total. Seven. Justin, you're muted. Ten. Uh, so, Catherine, you, you see when he goes in there, it's a palace <laughs> all of a sudden looking in um all of you see it's it's like fancy and the lights are shining but you're not sure if you're seeing it because there's a glare coming off of some type of of surface radio you would see that type of glare um coming off highly polished marble um he goes in there for like a minute or two comes out comes back in the front door of the inn and he's carrying a little Pomeranian and sits down at the table and um, introduces to you. Oh. Oh, this is Siren. Can we just call him Yontan? Oh, fine. This is Siren, my, my little puppy. And he's a very good oh. dog. He is very special. Uh... And I might be willing to let you take care of him and and benefit from his abilities. What? Oh, sure. If, if you promise that he'll be okay and you... Oh, what do I want? He starts thinking, what do I want in return... Well, I mean, it's always, like I said earlier, it's always nice. Well, how about this? You kill the hag or the hags, hopefully. Uh, let's say you su survive. You take their heads, the three heads, the hag and whatever the other the other two are. And uh, he starts digging into one of his pockets <laughs> on his chest. He pulls out a silver uh, thread wrapped around a, a spool and he goes, um, you get you you collect those heads, and I want you to trust me. It'll be hilarious. It's gonna sound a little gross, but it'll be hilarious. You t you uh, sew their faces together like they're all three kissing. Uh, severed heads, by the way. Did I mention that? Uh, yes, you did. Wait, and and you mean like even if two of them aren't hags you still want us to cut off their whatever head? their yeah whatever their heads are it may be a problem if one of them is like a naga or or a excuse me a hydra then that would be a little bit of a problem because then obviously you could have a bunch of heads 
and you might need more thread. You would like you would like us to create a sort of um uh formaldehyde triple kiss. <laughs> like some sort of taxidermied triple kiss. Yes, uh but but that's not it. Uh it's not, that that's not funny on its own. Uh w once you do that, I would like you to gift it to the wardens of Anista. Hilarious, right? Uh, <laughs> wait, that's that's really a funny. radius crush just dies immediately just dies it's dead <laughs> and the sense you get from him is he's uh just he's being extremely nice and jovial but you he's the type of being that you can easily see swinging to an extreme opposite if prompted He's, he's, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so okay. he says, yes, just send it to him, deliver it to them. It'll be hilarious. You'll tell and me we about We don't have to say necessarily that we were the ones that sent it, right? We can just yeah. like, no. Yeah. Um, uh, Nihilus, so can you give us just one, one minute? Uh, I need to talk to my friends over in this little corner over here. Okay. Uh, he's gonna pull everyone to a corner. We're gonna huddle. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say let, let's say that we're gonna do it, but we don't actually do it. We'll just say like, "Oh yeah, we sent it." Um, I need to be very <laughs> honest. I'm very afraid of him. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think I... if we say we're going to do it, we kind of gotta do it. Wait, <laughs> um, just... my... But the puppy is so cute. Look at that little puppy. <laughs> Can you can you remind me like I'm trying to remember like this is between you two, um, so weren't the wardens the ones who wanted us to save like come back in the future and save the world right? Yes. So wouldn't they be yes. happy if we killed the hive? Well, yes. if we I think it's them. just disturbing <laughs> the what we need to do. To, I mean, we, we could just you know go what? and tell them and just like you, mention that. You we... know what? We can we can write a note on the on the heads and just say like, "Hey, it's us." <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, this is supposed to be funny. We don't get it. <laughs> Happy birthday! But can we just talk to the wardens and be like, "Hey, you want us to kill the hags, and this stopper guy wants us to kill the hag." He wants us to do this weird sex thing. Uh, <laughs> do, you, Listen, do you need the weird sex thing? Or maybe we can just like, else, say we did it. If nothing else, maybe we just like definitely sever the heads. That feels like something we can do that mm -hmm. feels pretty yeah. easy. Mm -hmm. And then we bring that severed those severed heads with us to talk to the wardens. And then oh. at that point, we can, we'd can we be like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And if they seem like they have like a good sense of humor or like a weird sense of humor, then we very quickly stitch them up and do what we need to do. Okay. What I'm saying is we should just agree to this because the puppy is cute and I think we'll be good. Okay, but who's yeah. going to sew the faces together? One, two, three, not it. Not it. Well, I, I do that all the time. Actually, Sarah I would be fine with that. Pro, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I, and you don't think we can ask him to not do this weird sex thing? Hold on. Just have to... <laughs> Excuse me. Do you think it's a sex thing, Sarah? Hold on. Do you think it's I, a... <laughs> I mean, it was like just so three dead bodies into a kissing position. I, I feel that like that's really some weird. sort of sex thing. Hottie, it's really weird. Hottie came over about halfway through because he forgot he was a member of of the, the so group. did we it's okay and he goes hold on you realize we you're talking about this him, but it's and fine. and uh you didn't even ask what his dog does <laughs> it's cute it's a dog <laughs> what does it oh, mean well, to do I, Listen, it's I'm put already my doing its best accessory always pro puppy i mean if we know, know nothing else about the big bed fellows is that we are but you're possibly puppy. gonna risk offending <laughs> very powerful wardens of the city They'll get us. Fine. Like... And Radia just shouts over her head, Stop it! What exactly does the puppy do? <laughs> oh, well, funny you should ask. <laughs> I was actually very entertained that you didn't ask in the first place. But, uh, so, uh, this, this puppy, it's not a normal puppy. It's, I neglected to describe the fur, which is iridescent green, uh, Ooh. shimmers in the light. And, um, well, he goes, well, she, uh, she can 
just seek out hag eyes. You guys oh. know about hag eyes, don't you? The eyes no. of hags? Sarah pulls the moving eye that she got from a long time ago. The so dog like starts kind of freaking thing? out and Stoppard goes, oh, mm-hmm. yep, that's one. Uh, you oh. <laughs> uh, so that robot we encountered was a hag? Uh, I don't know this term, robot. Uh, Is that where you got the eye from, Sarah? Sarah wasn't here I, when she got it. I forget. Someone gave Justin it to me. Wasn't. <laughs> Justin wasn't here. Uh, it was, it was, it was that rotting corpse on the ground that yeah, we it was, thought was a it robot. Was the, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The, there was two the uh, sewed up things. Sewed up beings and mm-hmm. one of the eyes in the child version was still moving and I thought Sarah would like it and I yeah. put it in her bag and then told her when Ooh. she came back. And that, that body oh, was my gosh. Up that child was a hag? What? Just oh. It was a child hag. Uh, oh, and okay. Stoppard goes, if you're saying this out loud, he'll go, you, you got it off a of flesh golem is, is what I would guess from your description. The sewing up of the, it was a sewed up body. Oh, good point. Okay. Why would oh, yeah. I put their eye in a flesh golem? Oh, it's not just their eye. They can make, some of them, very powerful ones, can make many of these eyes. Usually only they can take out an eye and they can scry on uh and he pauses at the word scry do you guys know what scrying it means spying sure yes very accurate i actually knew someone in fact who would uh you just need an object that you know to scry on and then you can scry on that area he would take shits in places just to scry on that place he called it shit scrying (laughs) that's so specific i know that's true Anyways, uh, she, uh, Siren, Siren uh, can seek these out. Very good at finding them, getting rid of them, eating them if you let her. Uh, she the can, hag, eat the hags? No, the eyes. Uh, she's also immune to most spells, which is when, which is why, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm I'm willing to let you borrow her forever okay we 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 are gonna take the dog and we're gonna do this and then uh um you know that makes me kind of what can you tell us why you want us to sew him in a kissing position because i'm just i just can't get past this because it's that... hilarious okay so and, and have you said it's like, very we, what if we very confused by you asking that just like yeah. it's hilarious what? Okay, but let's say we wanted to be serious for a second. Like, what, if we, <laughs> what if we killed the hags and we or the whatevers, and then we give them to the wardens just like you wanted? Like, what if we just save that joke for another time? Is that fine? That would be a very serious thing to do uh, if we agreed to to uh, me helping you. So you really Aradia... said on this joke, okay? <laughs> Aradia asked if she can hold the puppy. Yeah, he, he hands uh, the puppy over and she starts licking your face and uh, is still trying to get at the, the eyeball that she saw Sarah had. Um, no, 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 not right now. Bad puppy. <laughs> and he goes, uh, so, you know what? Hold on. I may. Oh, yeah, I do have. I might have that if I can find it. Uh, he goes, he, he gets up and walks up the stairs and you hear, uh, people going, Oh, just like getting bumped by him. And he's going, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And you hear a few doors slam. And, uh, in one, when one of the doors, uh, opens, you hear like big band music playing really loudly, um, and various types of orchestras. And he finally comes back down the stairs with a platter full of cookies Ooh. And he uh, is holding it, sits down back at the table. Uh, people have cleared out uh, pretty much by now, except one drunkard at the bar who's passed out with his head face down. Um, <clears throat> he comes down, puts the cookies on the table, and says, don't touch, eat these. So, uh, wait. <laughs> hold don't, on. don't touch, touch eat these. Eat them? Don't. <laughs> I just don't uh, touch them. 
uh, which includes your mouth. Uh, so if you can, I don't think you'll be, I've, these have been laying around for like a few, has it been a few thousand years or something? Uh, but, but, uh, not necessarily your time because the Fey in the Feywild, it's, um, time's really weird. So it could have been yesterday or it could have been 10,000 years ago. Well, Anyways, fresh. uh, yeah, they're, they smell delicious. Anyways, uh, Baba Yaga gave me these as like a gift. Uh, and I just, uh, haven't found a use for them, but, uh, essentially what they can do is they, she said she gave them to me because they can randomly transform anybody or anything that, um, eats them into a, uh, uh, a random creature uh, and they will never turn back into what they formerly were so, <gasps> Ooh. Uh, but it's random and that's that's my that's my jam uh, so that's why she thought that she's a very interesting lady so they could she... turn into like a very powerful monster yeah or a rug <laughs> okay. Uh, Justin, Sarah would know Baba Yaga. Um, is a very oh. famous witch, arch witch. Um, okay. so much so that some witches aren't even sure she was real. Uh, but also some people still say you've probably encountered people that have said I've met Baba Yaga. She she. She uh she can go from the Feywild to the Material Plane as she wills it, and um, she's so revered in the witch community um, that witches won't call the, use those names for themselves or naming anything. Um, Baba or Yaga. Yes. Or. Okay. Um, Baba Yaga. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I don't. Is that a song? I don't. That's, I just made it one. It felt like it. I mean, I know. Weirdly, I got told Baba Yaga stories when I was younger. So that really like great. me, Catherine. They're really yeah. great. Um, so maybe it is a song I've heard at one point. Is she like a, a Russian thing? Eastern, yeah, Eastern. It was. It's not just Russian, but it's also just Eastern European, Czech, oh, okay. uh, Czech Republic, and yeah, Ukraine, and. Um, stuff like that uh but she's she can be she's been used in various different ways she can be extremely evil but also good um anyways so you recognize the name these cookies are from her uh and he says yeah if you can find a way to get them to eat a cookie uh in about two to three days they'll transform into something and uh it uh i think my I would guess she's not going to give me a cookie that is like I play a joke on someone and they turn into, you know. A... But we don't have that kind of time. We're cursed still, right? No. No. You're not cursed, but. Uh, but she's still visiting us at weekend. night? No, she hasn't. She she hasn't visited you. Um... You guys haven't slept yet, so actually you don't know. Um you don't know what what's going to happen, yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. So, so you want us to turn these, have these hags, supposed hags, eat the cookies to transform into something random? But then you still want us to cut off the head of that random mm. thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, what if they if they turn into a rug? Mm -hmm. Should we cut off the head of the mm -hmm. rug and just <laughs> bring that in? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How okay. do you know what the head of a rug is? Like, which side would it be? I'd love to the, see your interpretation of it. The top okay. side, that side, you know. <laughs> We're going to, like, we should just, oh, my God. Wait, I'm just between the three of us. Uh, what, <laughs> if we, what if we just glue a, a rug, a chair, and a sweater together, <laughs> and then we say we killed the hag after the AP's cooked, and we're done? I think... <laughs> I think this, we should kill the hags and then decide what we're doing. How are you right telling now me? this is fun, but... How are you That's... preventing Stoppard from hearing that, Sarah? 
Um, then we have telepathic commu- Oh, Roddy has that, huh? Uh, <laughs> Maybe what? Sarah just told Prati and Prati told the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I whispered into Prati's ear. Or his, or my no, he... dragon. He... <laughs> Prati says... He can hear you. Prati says... Oh, um... yeah. He can read my mind, right? Prati says, <laughs> I don't I don't think it's a good idea to screw mm. with this guy. Okay, so we I guess we need to come up with a plan to get these hags to eat these cookies. And Stoppard goes, I'm just trying to help you guys out. You don't if you can if you can take care of it, take care of this coven without the cookies, fine, but uh obviously don't let anyone else you don't want to have the cookies. You know, it's just like if you have magic cookies you keep them out of the reach of innocence. Our sisters. Yes. Oh, or at the orphanage, we could just like put out a tray of cookies mm-hmm. and see which ones turn into bad things, and which what? ones were innocent and not innocent. That doesn't make sense. Oh, yes. This <laughs> doesn't a... sound like a horrifying plan <laughs> that will get idea. us all killed. <laughs> okay. I agree. Um, yeah, uh, can we put them in a jar that says poison don't eat? <laughs> uh, you can do whatever you like. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so I, I just want to see this coven taken down because it sounds if it is a coven, I don't like hags. I don't like things that take advantage of, of other people, especially innocent people, people who are weak so, uh, needless to say, the cookie idea, uh, giving it to kids would not be a good thing. Okay. Can you take us to the Feywild sometime? Uh, sure, but I don't know when you'll come back. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. I have to be very honest with you. I am both terrified of you and my loins are doing very specific oh. things. So... <laughs> I'm going to trust that these cookies are for our best at the end of the day. And let's just take it. Let's take Siren. Let's go live our lives and beat these hags. Okay. Uh, would you... <laughs> would you... Uh, sometimes I forget that I was in this form, so I got a little confused there. But I understand now I'm quite handsome. Uh <laughs> so I don't think just so you know so you're clear I have n- the outward appearance of something has never been the thing that's attracted me to it so yeah you're Stop actually not that cute you're, yeah 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 if, if we're quite honest I was once fell in love with a mummy looking thing that had no teeth <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna try and no, do it again but no I he had teeth he had no lips. <laughs> no lips. I was about to try and do the thing again, but I can't stop smiling. So. <laughs> Stoppard isn't isn't phased by by that, and um, it's just like yeah, sense of humor can go. A also, long a way. large sphinx woman. A large sphinx woman is this also is fantastic. My type. Whether or not you guys accept my help, I'm having a great time. So let's just let's just put that on the table. Great. So, um, what should we do with this, with these cookies and this dog? Like, what is our plan here? That's you're talking to us, Nihilus, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Um, I think we. I mean, first and foremost, the cookies take two to three days, so we should probably get. What if we're going to do something with those? We should start doing them now. Mm-hmm. By the should way, we um... eat them? Do you want no, we Siren should. to take care of that hag eye for you? What's an hag eye? Hag, hag eye. eye. <laughs> oh, hag eye. Oh. Why do you um... travel with her? Uh, th- this. <laughs> Why do you travel with her? Uh, 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 Stop. says to the rest of you, and Hottie goes. You're, uh, ex- don't do Hottie that. Goes, don't be rude. Beats sir. the hell out of me. <laughs> no, don't be rude. She. Already is a... Our best Already... friend. She also Already said she wanted to feed her. the cookies to to kids so and, well but uh, i don't see the problem she's yeah. the face you know she's the face of our organization she's the pretty one good god oh, yeah 
I try. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're big Vegas fellas. We stick together in one bed. But... Sarah, do you have anything in there with lavender? This guy needs to calm down. I know. I like that. Uh, she like spritzes some lavender around his face. <laughs> so. He starts sneezing and giggling. Uh, <laughs> so, do you guys want my help or not? Yeah, we're taking the I... dog. Yeah. Well, so this hag guy, like, this helps me spy on people. So I kind of want to keep it, right? Oh, she's probably spying on you. That's my point. Oh, okay. But it, what if I like put it like in a drawer? Then you know. Oh, okay. I I feed the uh, hey siren. You want to be my best friend? <laughs> and I throw the eye, and then let the siren go eat it. Aradia, do you let go of siren? A siren like jumps out of her. Face. Sure. <laughs> um. Uh. And she goes after the hag eye, yeah. which which bounces, <laughs> and it's clock. It's got clockwork mechanisms in it. So you can kind of hear metal grinding, and she grabs it and eats it, and that's it. Uh, But uh, Stobbert says, you know, that may not be the only eye. They like to have a lot of those if they're especially powerful. So uh, anyways, I just want to reiterate that if anything happens to Siren, I'm going to be very upset. Other than that... Should we just stick the dog on the hag? Like, just let it loose? Oh, she... The dog will only go after her eyes. A siren. That's kind of fun, though, right? Like, I, I agree. I, I mean, agree. that will, will like, give her hey. disadvantage in some sorts if we decide to fight her. She's Ooh, very sensitive have... to to uh, non magical attacks, though. So. Oh God damn it! Oh, siren is. Mm-hmm. So, like, if somebody hits her, it so really you like hits her hard. So, like a normal puppy of that size. About the same amount of constitution as Siren, if it's not being attacked by magic means. Let's keep her out of the battle, then. I think for right now, let's just wait that. until they're like dead. Or, but like, we can we surprise can make the hag. Her a little suit of armor. <laughs> <laughs> but we can like surprise the hag. Like, yeah. if we show up with like the dog behind our backs, and then like, I think if we, hey, Auntie Nani, bam. Right in the eyes. <laughs> I think we should tell you. We should try to. Uh, have I will you, promise right? to take care of Siren. I care about her living, so we'll take care of her. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay, she's such in, a good if girl. You want, if you wanted to help us, I could carry her in my purse. If you want to have <laughs> access. Uh, Stoppard starts sniffing the air and is like, "You guys smell that." No. What Make is it? a perception check. Everyone. Everybody. Oh, God damn it. I'm a four. A, I got a seven. Ooh, a 19 plus six, 25. Whoa. Okay. Uh, what was yours again, uh, <coughs> Justin? Uh, seven. Okay. Uh, Aradia, you start smelling like burning hair and... um. Uh, dirty dreadlocks. <laughs> uh, Ew! Burning dirty dreadlocks. Gross. Uh, just really terrible smell. And Stoppard says this might be getting a little more interesting. Albeit, hey, can I have that lavender you just spritzed me with? Um, why? It's, <laughs> it's three gold <laughs> each. Spritz, actually. Yeah. I'll just yeah, go grab my own. My, uh, you want to you wanna buy one for my uh, stock of inventory? It's 15 gold. Guys, I, say, I think something yeah. bad is happening. <laughs> and as you, guys are, as you guys are doing that, um, two, one, uh, one at a time, two massive, headless, oh, great. hair-covered beasts come into <laughs> the inn. <laughs> Sending Naomi, the drunk guy, still passed out at the uh, table. Naomi screams and runs. Uh, you hear people screaming Hi. outside. And, Naomi, you coward! And uh, eventually, two are in front of you, and they they're they don't have a head, but the middle of them vertically splits open, and you see is like a mouth, and it looks like a bunch of different type of hair uh, clumped together. Uh, even. You even see like a braid in there, and it's all roiling and and mixing together in a mucousy and greasy and burned kind of mix, just constantly roiling and boiling and 
what I, I, so roll Sarah initiative uses, can Sarah <laughs> use an action uh, to pull out a comb from her uh, purse uh, you can do that after oh, we roll God. initiative. You can use your uh, first action okay. to do that oh, if you'd like. Oh, my God. Not 20 for initiative. So what's your total? Uh, total is... Richard is a two. Sorry, Nyola is a two. <laughs> 23. I got a, I got a one. <laughs> oh, my God. You don't have a uh, any... Uh, what is it called? No, my Modifier? Stat... Modifier on your initiative. Nope. Nihilus, what are you again? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a two. And uh, Justin, you're one? Yes. Okay. What about Prady and what's his name? Um, Prady and Hottie. I'll roll uh, for Prady. Do you guys have his character sheet? Have you guys I exchanged do not. those? No. Um, but we can go on the thing. Can yeah. you access his? I believe so. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, if you can, uh, please please do. Campaign. <clears throat> um, Jesus Christ. You. Yeah, he looks like he's up to date. Okay, so you, uh, you can see like his spell list and stuff? Uh, yes. Cool. And he's got a plus one to his initiative. So go ahead and roll his initiative. Do you want me to do that, Richard, or are you doing Oh, that? yeah, sure. It doesn't matter. He got a six, so a seven. Okay. And what did Cal and how roll? About ho how about Hardy? Hardy. Uh, that's holy moly. Let me pull up his statue. You may, you can. I put it in the NPCs um, portion of Discord in the subsection. You should have access to it to download it. In. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. In what section? In the in D and D and Beyond, or in Discord? Oh, I see. In, in the NPC. No oh, yeah. Characters. For yes. No, 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 no. Should I um? Did we roll for Hadi? Do you want me to do that, or did you roll for uh, David? I we rolled for. I did not for roll David. for Hadi yet. I can. Do you, are you guys comfortable with playing a barbarian, or do you want me to play him? Um, I've never done a barbarian. I could look it up really quick and try to figure it out. Um, um, I would rather play the barbarian than Prodi. If somebody else wants to play Prodi, I'll play the barbarian. Okay. Yeah. Do, did you post a, a sheet for Prodi? And I'll do that. Oh, I think Richard was going to play Prodi. Uh, Prodi's on D. Oh, oh, if you want me to yeah. do it, I can do it. No, yeah, because okay, you're. Cool. Yeah, great. Um, since I rolled for Prodi, do you want to roll for Hottie? Uh, Richard? Me? Oh, sure, sure. He has a plus yeah. two initiative, so he will be total of 20. Oh, 20. hell yeah. <laughs> oh. And, um, we'll take a fiver, a five minute break okay. right now. Okay. And we'll be back at one fourteen. Great. See you soon. Okay. See ya. All right. We are back. And we're in combat as these two hair monsters appeared through the doorway. And, um, Aradia, you were first to act. Um, Aradia sees them, um, and immediately decides to. Uh, do a. I'm, I want to use one of her new things, so I'm just looking at it. Um, uh, she immediately decides that she wants to do a stunning strike with uh, with her quarter staff. You have to. So, uh, what's the requirements of stunning strike? I believe you have to do flurry of blows first. 
Uh, 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 uh. It just says when you hit with a melee weapon attack, you can spend one key point to make the target stunned until the end of your next turn if it fail, fails a con saving throw. Okay. Um, so you have to land an attack first? Got it. Okay, cool. Then let's go ahead and take the uh, quarter staff and go for... Um, uh, go for... Do, 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 do. You know what? No, let's just do flurry of blows with with her guys. Her wraps. Okay. Um, that'll be one bonus action. You still have your actions though, which can be oh, of course your your uh, quarter staff. Quarter staff. And I don't know if you guys. Got I want to hit them with my quarter staff. Okay. Um. So roll roll your d twenty. Add your attack modifier, which. Uh, mm. Go ahead. Uh, it's a five. So. <laughs> it's not great. With your attack uh, modifier, it's what? 11. Okay, yeah, that won't do it. Do you have an extra attack? You get two attacks per action on your character sheet, it looks like. Mm hmm. Let's go ahead and do um, an unarmed strike. Okay. Uh, 13 plus 7, yeah. 20. That'll do it. Roll Very damage. Uh -huh. 2 plus 4, 6. Okay. Oh, what are we calling these guys? Because there are two of them, right? Just left and right. Hair we'll say you're attacking left. the left right now. Yeah. Uh, so you land that. You still have your bonus action. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, bonus action. We'll go ahead and do flurry of blows. Okay. So mark off your key point. Uh, da, da, da. Marked. Okay. And flurry of blows gives you two unarmed strikes. So let's see. So basically, uh, uh, two more uh, times of what you just did. So should I just do, just say that it's six for both of them? Uh, no, just roll two more d20s because these are separate attacks. Uh, uh, the first one. Then add four, your modifier. Four plus seven. So the first one was 11. Nope. Second one was 14. That'll do it. Just just hits. Uh, roll your damage for that one. Ooh, that's a good one. That was ten. Cool. Ten. Okay, so Two. that's seventeen total to the left hair monster. Yep. Uh, do you want to? My first one. Do I have one to two? Do anything else with your key points or no? No, not right now. Okay. It is Hottie's turn. As you see, Aradia run up and just unleashes. She first tries with her quarterstaff and then pretty much switches to her fists in a flurry of hand motions into this hair disgusting thing. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and so Hadi is um, going to look around and go, oh, I guess we're good doing this now, I guess. Okay, fine. Um, and then, um, <laughs> and then he's going to take out... Oh, can I do that? Uh, same reduction. I want him... You tell me if I can do this or not. I think I can. Um, I want him to use his boomerang um, for his first action. Okay. Uh, okay, so, so roll a d20, and uh, the modifier's plus five, it looks like, so add five to it. Oh, nice. He did 18 plus five, so 23. Yeah, that'll hit, and roll um, the and damage. And he's going, he's going for the left hair monster as well. Okay. Um, damage is 1d4 plus two. Oh, forgot to do... <laughs> D force the triangle one that I had a hard time with, right? Correct. That's the one. Um, let's see. That is one plus three. Okay. 
Um, and then, uh, for his bonus action, let's see, does he do two actions or just one? He does one. Um, and then for his bonus action, he's gonna rage. Okay. You hear Hottie go. He throws. <laughs> he throws his boomerang. You just see this boomerang go over your head. <laughs> Hits the hair monster, falls to the ground, and then you hear Hottie goes, I guess I'll have to rush! And he starts screaming. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, do you want him to run up to the monsters? or Yes. Or, okay. He's going to run up to the left monster, left hair monster, um, and maybe just start like doing this in their face, like... <laughs> 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 they don't have a face, but yes, I get what you mean. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's Hottie's turn. Next, it is Prodi's turn. Oh, did they roll really low initiative? Soup, soup's low. Okay. Uh, whoops. Oh shit. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do with him. Uh, 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 uh. He is gonna do uh, an Eldritch uh, blast, and since he's a sixth level, he gets two beams, and he could direct them at both of them. Um, but I have to roll to make sure that he can actually hit them. Yep, two d20s, one for each. Uh, beam. Oh, okay. Let's do these. Okay, so the one on the left is gonna be a sixteen. Yep. And the one on the right is gonna be eleven. Nope. Okay, so the one on the left gets a one d d10 plus two. So where's my d10? There, no, that's not you. This the one is flying it. Flying saucer, yeah. Yeah. So it's gonna be six to hit the one on the left. Okay. And I guess that's it for now. And uh, he doesn't have any bonus actions he can do. Okay. And uh, so you guys see these two beams fly out of Prodi's rod. One of them flies past the right monster uh, and breaks a window. The left one connects and hair is flying out of this left one as you guys have been beating into it. Um, it is looking fine, though. So that's Prodi's turn. It is now the Golem's turn. And... Which Golem? Uh, we're going to start with the left and then okay. the right. Okay, it's going to multi-attack Aradia. Oop. Good luck, girl. Thanks, yo. Nine. Nine damage. Nine, nine to hit. What's your armor class? Nine. My armor class is way higher than that. It is 16. And an 11. So he swings and misses blowing his his uh, action and just make sure yeah that's his turn and the left one is going to or the right one I excuse okay. me <laughs> <laughs> I was like what uh you guys see, uh, so Hottie and Aradia are right next to the left one, and the one that hasn't been touched, the right one. Both of them have the split down the middle that's kind of like opening like a mouth, and you see this right one start convulsing, and Ew. and uh, almost like it's gurgling or coughing, and then all of a sudden something shoots out from the split in its torso. And it's going to shoot at. It's going to shoot at Nihilus. No! Um, <laughs> you whore. And that's a 18 to hit. No, that hits! <laughs> and it's going to do that. How much does it hit for? Ooh. Uh, only don't, five don't... damage. Ooh, okay. Uh, but make a deck save. Uh, that is plus uh, 18 that'll do so this hairball essentially shoots out from this thing at Nihilus it hits him 
but falls off harmlessly to the floor. It's covered in mucus and Ew. disgusting slime. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, that's its turn. So, it is so now it's my turn. Nihilus's turn. Okay. Um, I'm just going to have to... I guess it's not waste, but I'm going to have to use this turn to cast myself uh, Mage Armor, which will bring me up to 14. Cool. Uh, anything else? No, I can't do a bonus action on that. Okay. Um, Justin. Hey. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out my... I've got so many spells and like things to figure out. Okay, I'm going to... Um... <clears throat> Are are the two hair people uh, humanoids? No, like because they're human. No. They're not humanoids. Okay. Um, then I'm going to uh, quickly find something else to do. Which <laughs> is, uh, okay. Okay. Can't do that. Okay. I'm gonna do. Um, are they? Uh, is are they in a line? Can I uh, can I walk in so, a way that would put them in a line? Uh, unless you get right next to them. Uh, so think of it like a square room. They're both pretty wide and large creatures, uh, mm-hmm. but they're facing you uh, two in front of you, kind of left, right, and uh, okay. you're you're kind of back, and uh, you'd have to move over to the side you're on the it would just be really awkward and weird you'd have to get right next to him okay no that, that makes sense i'm no uh, let's see i'm going to um let's see uh, okay i can't do that one i'm gonna cast uh witch bolt on the left one i'm okay. gonna figure out what that does which bolt um so uh okay uh, a beam of crackling energy lances out towards the creature within range, forming a sustained arc of lightning between you and the target. Um, so on a hit, uh, so let's see, it does... Okay, so I'm going to roll to see if it hit. It's um, a spell attack. So I'm going to roll... Ooh. And I rolled a one. <laughs> um, so that means that it's a failed, right? Yep. And... Um, does it take half damage if it I guess it failed, so No, if it's an attack yeah. it's usually uh for attacks it's usually hit or it's like make it or don't. Uh usually the saves okay. are the ones with half uh half Okay, damage. so that that misses and then I use my my movement to kind of walk back as far away as I can. Okay. Uh Stoppard at this point when this all broke out, he's not scared at all. But he gets out of the way and goes back behind the saloon door of the kitchen and is like at first peeking around the corner just so he can keep watching, but he's finding it awkward and stupid. So you see him, you see this light from behind the door form in the, in the uh, shape of a square and he uh, pokes it out and now there's like a second door, peephole door that he can look through. Um, uh, so he's back there. Great. <laughs> he is encouraging you guys. Get him, guys. It's disgusting and it smells. Uh, Aradia, it's your turn. Aradia is going to take out her torch and tender box and light the torch on fire. Um, and try and light the left hair monster on fire. Okay. Um, make an attack, which would be, it's an improvised weapon, which I don't know that you're proficient in that. I am not, I don't think. Although it does say that one of my actions that I can do is improvised, but it's not. Oh, yeah, I think that's, uh, where, where does it say that? Um, under actions, it says actions and combat attack cast a spell. Like it just gives me options. Oh, sure, and sure, One sure. of them is improvise. Yeah. Um, or uh, use an object is another one. I'll look at your proficiencies. Yeah. Uh, your proficiency is on the left side of your bottom left. Oh. Um, mm-hmm. it doesn't look like you are, so you're not going to add your proficiency bonus. But 
you can um, roll your d20 and add your dex mod because I want that to happen. Great. <laughs> um, let's see. So I rolled a nine. Dex mod. Three. Is three. So. Twelve. Twelve. So you light your tinderbox and this creature is moving and it's slimy. Um, and uh, you throw it at it because a little bit of goop was about to come at you. So you instinctively just throw it at it and it flies by it and Oh. Um, let me see if it goes out. Yep. Uh, it goes out on the floor uh, because there's slime and gunk now covering the floor around them. Uh, okay. So do you have a bonus action, you key point you want to spend, anything like that? Um, that was really the thing that I was looking forward to. So now I'm just trying to... Uh, 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 uh. I mean, I guess, I guess I'll do flurry of blows. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it's five plus seven, twelve. Yeah, uh, but you get Not two unarmed end. strikes, so you uh, that was the first one. Roll it your d twenty oh. again. Oh, not bad, not bad at all. Twenty one. Yep, that'll do. Roll your damage. <laughs> yeah six plus four ten cool crushing it um do you want so we're to at use... 36 for the left hair monster yep do you want to use uh any of your cobalt soul class features Oh, I mean, yes, I do, but I also like feel like I don't want to use. Well, I guess we're at the end. We can go and take a short rest, pretty easy. So let me not be as uh, stingy with my key points. Um, I want to do a. You only hit once, so um, I think you can only do um, extract aspects. Sunning strike. Or. You uh, extract it. Yeah, sure. Let's do an extract aspect because I know I want to. I want to practice using that because I want to use it later for sure. Okay, so choose um, to learn three characteristics about the creature of your choice. You can learn creature type, armor class, senses, uh, saving throw modifier of your choice, damage vulnerabilities, damage resistances, damage immunities, or condition Im immunities. I definitely want to use uh, 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 learn damage vulnerabilities and damage resistance. And then let's also do armor class on the right hair monster. Or can I only do it on the one that I attack? They, to you, they look like the same creatures. Uh, but okay, it, great. But it's usually so. your the one you attacked. Okay, um, so the left one. Then. So vulnerabilities, slashing, uh, bludgeoning, uh, resistances, damage resistances are bludgeoning and piercing from non-magical attacks not made with adamantine. Bludgeoning and what was the other action? Piercing from non-magical attacks. That's piercing. the resistances. And you wanted to know what else? Armor class. 14. Okay. 14... Thank you. It is now Hottie's turn. Key point. Monsieur Hottie. Um, well, then I think we gotta go with, uh, how do you say this? The Glave? Gravel? Glave? Glave. Great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think he's gonna take He would say it, Glave. Glave. <laughs> oh. Um, he's gonna take the uh, the glaive with that does some slashing, and um, uh, he is going to. I don't actually know what a glaive is. What does it it's look like? It's a big, like? long. To... It's a pole arm, which means like it's as tall or taller than the user. Um, so a spear is a pole arm, uh, but essentially it's got like Ooh, a sword cool. on the end of it. Oh, like a curved I like sword. it. Yeah, um, just think of like. 
a yeah a a, a, yeah it's a halberd like in is game a, of thrones yes yeah, so what was the, the character that the, uh, the red vipers yes he used a pole yeah. arm which is similar to a glaive um, against okay, the cool. giant <laughs> Cool. You should, like the you should take his head and just squish it like, a, <laughs> like the mountain. <laughs> um, he is gonna take the glaive and he is going to do like a big. He, he, he's gonna time for a haircut and then like goes to slash. This brings back memories. Uh, roll Great. your d twenty and then add your attack modifier. Ooh yeah! So we got fifteen plus eight, twenty three plus. Um, your rage gives you, if I'm not mistaken, no, that only gives you, when you hit, you get a uh, bonus two damage. Um, so, nice. uh, when you roll your, your damage, cause you just hit, uh, add two to that as well. Great. Okay. So I am, oh, no, it fell on the floor. Where are you? Okay. So it was two plus five so we got seven and then plus uh how much was it for rage plus another two yep okay so that is uh nine to the left hair monster to the left to the left and does he have two actions um yes two attacks and I yeah, don't he's know got, that he has two he's got he's got uh, he's got two attacks. Yeah, all yeah. You martial characters get an okay, extra great. attack. Then he's level. gonna bring that glaive. He's gonna bring that glaive and he's gonna do like he he did this angle and now he's going that way. He's going the other direction. He's going in for another kill. <laughs> you smelly foul beast. Beautiful. Um Yeah, another fifteen, so twenty three. Yeah. That'll hit. Roll your damage. Oh, what happens when it lands on a zero? Does that mean 10? Yep. Or does that mean zero? Yep. 10. Ooh. 10 plus 5 plus 2. 17. We got a 17. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm really into playing a barbarian. <laughs> barbarians are, n n oh. like, they're insane in combat. Uh, they're just... And I get... To do a bonus attack, right? You can frenzy attack as a bonus action, which gives wow. you another attack. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm rolling another d20. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 14. Oh, what do I? Uh, what do I add? Where's my? Where's my modifier for that? Should be where? Uh, right next to where it says glaive. Because you're still using oh, your glaive. Oh, okay. So it's still got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so that's 14. So that's 22. Which I know hits. So yep. I'm moving. Uh, 3 plus 5. 8. 10. Yeah. So in about 6 seconds, you see Hottie just, in a, <laughs> just tear into this thing, cutting it um, down to nothing. It is yeah. on the ground, lifeless. Mm, uh, mm, 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 it's a disgusting mm. pile of mucus and hair and smelly, burnt uh, material. But the left one is down. The left hair golem is down. Uh, and that is his turn, I assume. That's the end of it? Yes. Okay. Proddy's turn. All right. So Proddy is going to do vicious mockery. So he yells at the... At the right hairy thing, he says, "You stink ass hairy butthole," and and <laughs> and um, so he he has to do a wisdom saving throw. He has to beat thirteen. Okay. Um, that is a eighteen. A no, so it didn't work. <laughs> Does he still take damage? Uh, I don't think so it says um it must succeed on the saving throw or take 1d4 damage okay uh but because of his level of been two okay uh yeah so no he doesn't take damage to that then does he want to use mage armor well, he can't now but he can't now yeah sorry uh i should have mentioned that um it is yeah i'm still like trying to look through everything to see what he has 
It is Hair Golem, right Hair Golem turn. And he is freaked out. <coughs> he doesn't know. He's not intelligent. He's a Hair Golem. But he turns to run at Hottie, uh, who is the closest. And he's going to do two slam attacks. What's his AC? His AC is 14. So an 18 and a 19. So those will be on Hati. Fucking roll. Fourteen damage on Hati, which it's mm-hmm. bludgeoning damage, so he's raging, and that is halved. So he takes only so, seven damage. Man, <laughs> in my next life, I'm gonna totally be a barbarian. <laughs> Good. I have plans to kill a radius soon. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh I'm no! Kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I would not do that. Uh, I still like her. Please <laughs> protect her. I won't protect her. I just won't purposely try to murder her. Um, okay. I'll take it. That is the hair golem's turn. It's Nihilus's turn. Okay, cool. So Nihilus is going to conjure up a spiritual weapon. Mm. Um, and he's going to conjure up a katana uh, to slash at this thing. So I got a roll to make a spell attack. Um, so that's 17. Um, and so, yeah, so I get a 1d8 worth of hit. So that's 8 plus my modifier, which is 3. So it, uh, he receives an 11 damage. Okay. And as a bonus, I'm going to go ahead and swing again. Okay. Uh, do I have to roll a... a, a Hold on. That's an attack again. Um, with spiritual weapon, you use your action to cast it, and then you're going to use a bonus action to swing, right? Um, it says you can make a melee spell attack against a creature. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're fine. Uh, let me just. So it says when I cast it, I can make a melee spell attack. Yeah, it's an action to cast it, and then it's constantly up after that. Uh, so you can use a. Bonus. So. When it says make a melee spell attack, that's my bonus. Is it? I think it's a bonus to cast it, right? Initially. Oh yeah, it is. You're right. Yeah, I yeah I've used that before in a different game, and and you can when you do a bonus a spell, you can do a cantrip attack as an action, but you can't do a regular spell. Action. Yeah, so you can't swing with it. Um, you can cast it, so it's there. So next turn, you can swing with it, but you still have your action, so you can cast another spell if you'd like. Okay, like a, sure, like I'll a can do that. Trip. A cantrip. Okay, uh, let me see what my cantrip... I'll do Ray of Frost on it. Okay. And so... Do, 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 Ray of Frost. Oh, I have to do a ranged spell attack. So that is 17, which hits. Yep. Um, and so it is 2d8. To hit. So that's 11. 11. Nice. Oh, which is basically what I already did. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so he's oh. frosty haired, less smelly slightly. Uh, Justin, it's your turn. Okay, I'm going to use a bonus action to cast Dragon's Breath okay. as a third level. Mm hmm. Um, so what that does is I touch myself and, um, and, touch myself. And, <laughs> and then all of a sudden I get the power to spew uh, poison breath out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> and so until the spell ends for, um, I think it's one minute, so like six turns or whatever, uh, I can shoot uh, a poison in a 15-foot corner cone so i'm gonna try to like move to a space where i could get both of them maybe without hitting my party one of them is down the left one is down so there's only one of them okay and then i'm just gonna spew at the guy's face yep uh and so let's say i'm gonna do that so that's a uh i cast it as a third 
level, so that's four d six. So wait, so let me roll a spell attack thing, right? Um, wait. Oh, they make a dexterity save. Yeah. Okay. That's gonna be a seven. Oh great! So they fail. I don't know what my spell save DC is. Is that written somewhere on the sheet? It should be on your D and D Beyond. Okay. Well, either way, seven's low. Uh, so, so let's see. Four D six is. Um, okay. Uh, Eleven plus three is um, a fourteen poison damage. Uh, great. And then that was a bonus action, uh, Dragon Breath. So now I'm going to do Acid is that, a, is that a class feature, your Dragon's Breath? Or did you just get that spell? Yeah, yeah so it's like um, a part of my witchcraft homebrew is that I get uh, up to three Druid or Warlock spells. Oh, that's what you picked. So, oh, cool. Yeah, so that was one of the ones I picked. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. And then... Uh, and so then I think, what is it? Uh, I was going to do uh, Acid Flash. Yeah, I'll okay. do Acid Flash, which is a cantrip, I think. And I do, let's see, so that one, they make a dexterity saving throw again. Okay. It's a six. Oh, great. Awesome. So then that's a 2d6, which is 10 damage of Acid. Okay. Great. And then uh, that's my turn. Uh, Richard, feel free to leave if you need to go to your podcast. Okay. Um, we'll close this out pretty quick, unless you guys, the two of you, want to sit here with me and do this, or we can finish it up in two weeks after Thanksgiving. Actually, Richard won't be here again, so, uh, um, yeah, either way, we're going to have to finish it up without Richard. We can do that now or later. I mean, let's... Let's kill these hair monsters, right? Okay. Yeah. It's your turn, Aradia. Okay. Um, so Aradia is going to do uh, a dart to the face <laughs> or whatever the closest thing to a face it has is. Doesn't have a head. So. Right. So just dart <laughs> to a strand. Um, nine plus six. So we got 15. That'll do. Um, which I know hits. And then uh, 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 two plus three, five. So, okay. So it doesn't look as effective as you would have hoped. Darn. When you asked about resistances, it was. Yes, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, piercing. Um, okay. She's going to go ahead and take, uh, do an on arm strike for her second one. Okay. Uh, Oh darn, that's a two plus so it's nine. Nope. So that one fails. Um for her bonus action, um, she's gonna go ahead and do try for another uh do 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 try for another un unarmed strike. Flurry of blows. She wants to I mean, it has both unarmed strike and flurry of blows as bonus action, but part of me wants to not use flurry of blows because okay. I don't wanna okay. um yeah, it's been a key point. Okay, so uh, unarmed strike. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, oh, where are you? You're a nine. Um, nine plus seven, sixteen. Yep. Nine plus seven, sixteen. Okay, and then ah oh, yes, that's what I'm talking about. So she uh, hit damage ten. Okay. She she takes her foot up and she like brings it down through the fur. And as your foot kind of sticks in it, and it makes that 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 slurping, that <laughs> no, <laughs> so gross. Agreed. Uh, but you pull it free, uh, and it's Hottie's turn. All right, um, Hottie is going for that uh, glaive one more time. Um, Hit it. Glaive me, baby, one more time. Uh, okay, six plus eight. 14 just hits. Oh, mm, 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 mm. And then where's my 10? Where are you, 10? There you are. Um, so that one is free. 
uh, plus five. So we got eight. So that's a ten for that one. Okay. And then he's gonna do another glove. Uh oh, darn! That one doesn't hit. That was five plus okay. eight. So thirteen. So no go there. And then for um, bonus action, frenzy. He's gonna go fr frenzy. Yeah, not twenty. Um, and then he will do four, nine, eleven. Eleven. What die did you roll for that um, frenzy attack? Oh, I did the d twenty or d d ten. Okay, and what'd you roll on that? Four. Okay, and so double Plus. that damage since it's a crit. So that's an Ooh. eight, and then add two for the rage, uh, which is ten, plus his bonus, which is three, is that correct? What's his bonus? Five. Five, so fifteen. <laughs> and that's what you needed to uh, take him down as you see Hadi chew through this next monster, screaming, raging, royally, aristocratically, if you will, <laughs> and... Uh, it falls to a lump on the floor, slime and guts, and uh, you see, uh, you hear Stoppard peek around the corner and goes, "Well done, that was fantastic. This is the best moon festival ever." And uh, Hotty gets all of a sudden is just like, <sighs> just gets super lethargic and tired after all of this raging and frenzying, raging. And he has one level of exhaustion because of frenzy rage. Uh, but you have taken care of the hell monsters. And Stoppard comes out and goes, uh, who do you think that was from? And uh, Tag. that's that's where we're going to end it. Probably my <laughs> sister. Oh, uh. can we end it with them with them going up to take a long rest? Sure. Up to I their mean, room. Sure. Oh, what yeah. are you going to tell Stoppard that your accept is... <sighs> Oh, we're all yeah, think... we're all literally one level hostage right now. <laughs> no, only so, Hottie is. Oh, uh, what are doing? We? Oh, we got cured of our exhaustion. Uh, yeah, remember Hottie uh, paid for it and knew some people. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well then, uh, but okay. So we we say, well, one of us is literally exhausted. The other ones are figuratively exhausted. <laughs> um, we asked if he would like to sleep in our bed. I can't be here another night. The uh, the way I come here only happens once a year, so I have to go back to... But we're keeping the dog. Yes, we accept your challenge. Thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, we'll we keep the dog for one year. We accept your challenge. Thank you so much. All right, enjoy yeah, the cookies. Please like keep them out of the reach of people who shouldn't have them. Uh, and We're going to uh, try our best. Can we contact you if we wanted to, like, while you're gone? Do no. a portal or something? No. Well, do you have a portal? <laughs> If you have a portal, I can get one. I can sure. ask around. For if you one. have a portal, sure. Uh, but okay. I, I don't know. I don't know how you're gonna do that. Okay. Anyways, just whenever you look at the moon, think of us. Just know we won't be looking back at it. Okay. Yeah. All yeah, right. We're gonna be busy, but just. Well, it's good question. meeting you guys. Hope you, hopefully you don't get uh, turned into hag chump. So, good luck. If anything happens to my dog, it'll be hell to play. Bye. And he leaves. Bye. Bye. And that's where we're going to leave it. Thanks for watching Venture Ventures. Uh, D&D Actual Play Podcast. Like, subscribe, shout. And we'll be back not next week, but the week after that. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.